Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. I am your host, your old pal, Uncle Hondo, your Sports Illustrated Las Vegas Raiders beat writer. Great to have you joined by this guy who has been with me for years, literally nearly two decades. Um, he is one of the best national media members that there is at thespun.com. I encourage you to keep the spun as one of your favorites. It just really takes you into all sports. Um, it covers all of them from, uh, you know, what, what's the highlights going on right now or what's something that's happening you should be aware of. To me, it's just a real quick hit. I love it. I read it. It's one of the first websites I, I read every morning. Um, again, this week they had lots of NFL, but they even had, um, you know, Caitlin Clark gets emotional after her first ho last home game at Iowa. And I found that interesting because it's just written short and quick to get me the update and move on. But he does a great job. And I have him on every week for this reason. As you know, I have bring on John Shop every week, who's an attorney and a very successful media member out of Buckhead in Atlanta, Georgia who covers media nationally, but he thinks analytically because he's a very successful attorney. And I have him on because I'm so much in the forest that sometimes I don't see the trees. And I do the same thing with Matt. He's a national NFL writer. He covers the league, all 32 teams in the league. I cover the Raiders. And so we talk about all subjects that impact the Raiders, but we get it, again, from a bird's eye perspective. So five days a week, you're getting me. But I like to bring in just a couple of different voices because I think those voices are germane and offer us a lot. So let's get right to it from the spun.com, my good buddy, Matt Holatic. Matt just got back from the owners' meetings. And let me tell you, well, I say just got back a couple days ago, but still, um, they were very fascinating to me. Um whether it was NFL people who were stunned that 30 and 35 guys from the Raiders are working out every day in the building. That stunned a lot of people. AP's approach. He's AP. They're, 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 him and Mike McDaniels are the two guys kind of doing it their way. Um, I just was surprised, you know, the amount of people that wanted to talk Raiders. What stood out to you besides the rules? from the owners' meetings? Yeah, well, the rules, I think, were the, the main thing. But, I, I, you know, I think every year you get a lot of draft buzz and, and things out of uh, any type of um, league-wide event. So I think that that was, was big. But to, I think the thing that stood out to me was the, uh, the scheduling be with the Christmas doubleheader because now you see the – NFL really making inroads on Christmas. Um, they've played on Christmas, I think, the last four years. Uh, and they played on Christmas occasionally before. But now Christmas has always been the NBA's day. And now you're seeing the NFL. The fact that they're playing on a Wednesday shows that they are intent on making this a yearly thing. Um, because they, you know, this is – they're willing to play on a Wednesday. They've already played on Christmas on a Friday through Monday. That leaves only two more days of the week that are left. And you know, they'd play on a Thursday because they play games on a Thursday anyway. So you're looking at pretty much every year, you're going to have some type of Christmas schedule in the NFL. So I thought that was huge. And I thought that the other interesting thing was what you hear a little bit more about um, the trip to Brazil with the Eagles week one, uh, it's going to be streamed on Peacock. You've seen the NFL continue to make that commitment to the streaming services and expand their, you know, their broadcasting footprint that way for better or worse. Some, you know, some fans hate it, and, but you know, it's here to stay. So I think that the NFL on Christmas is here to stay and the NFL streaming and the NFL playing overseas is here to stay. Yeah, very fascinating to me. I, I want to go back to the Christmas thing because I think it shows a couple of other things. And I like it, by the way. This is not a negative. The end, The NBA gets a lot of hype. But I think you would agree, it doesn't get any, any ratings anywhere remotely close to the NFL. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even, it, it's not even in the same league. 
I was told by a person, a television executive this week, that the NFL is starting to get, I mean, at the NFL, that the NBA is starting to get rivaled by UFC. That stunned me. Now, I don't, I don't work in that field. I'm not a TV executive. I'm just telling you what he told me. And when I asked him about the, uh, the NFL being on Sunday, he said, he told me, he goes, I, obviously it's good for ratings. It's good for that. So it's first and foremost, it's a money-making decision. But he said, I also think it's the NFL reminding all the other leagues, don't mess with us. We are the big dog. And what used to be your big day, we can take away. What do you think of that perspective? I That stunned me. I think totally because you look at, you know, everybody knows the NBA doesn't match up ratings wise with the NFL. Nothing matches up ratings wise with the NFL, but nothing. The, the NBA has always had certain things throughout the year um, that were theirs and, and were big opportunities for them. And, and the biggest was, was Christmas. You know, you have your five games, six, I don't know how, I forget how many games exactly they play, but, from noon Eastern time through about midnight Eastern time, you know, 12 hours of nonstop NBA basketball. And it's a huge event. Um, it's been that way for decades. And I think that, again, like I said, the NFL has played on Christmas the last couple of years, and they played some Christmas games before that. So it's not like the NFL being on Christmas is a completely new concept, but the fact that they are really trying to make that part of their brand and make it a yearly thing, uh, the NBA can't be happy because, you know, the NFL is always going to beat it ratings-wise, and now it's stepping up in direct competition on one of the biggest days, one of the biggest showcase days of the year uh, for the NBA. Right. You know I've been beating the drum – Thursday night to start the season at Arrowhead, Raiders, Chiefs, okay? Matt, I had so many people stop me and say at the owner's meeting, man, keep hammering that drum. That would be a great game. That would be fun. Then I see them playing. How cool would it be to have them start the season on a Thursday night at Arrowhead? And then come back on a Wednesday on Christmas Day at Allegiant. Raiders, Chiefs, Christmas Day. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Matt, come on, join the parade with me. Come on. It, You're it a would national definitely, media guy. Jump on the horse and ride it with me. It definitely would be fun to at least get one of those showcase dates um, for Raiders, Chiefs. I mean, it's a traditional robbery. Obviously, it hasn't been – um, what it was in this, you know, the seventies and, and nineties recently, but you get it, you're getting a little bit of that coming back with the Antonio Pierce kind of comments and, and things like that. The Raiders beating the chiefs on Christmas last year, the last team to beat them. Um, I, I think it will be fun. Uh, now, again, you don't know what the league has planned. The league could have, I'm sure the league is going to want to get, some of at least at least one major market uh in those games on on Christmas we, we know Thanksgiving's always Dallas and Detroit and there's a third game at night so we'll see you know let this year on Christmas you had the two traditional rivalries with the Raiders and Chiefs Giants and Eagles and then you had a third game which was two of the best teams in the NFL and the uh, Niners and Ravens so we'll see how they do it I think it'll be a lot of fun I I mean I think that I, I don't think it would become a yearly tradition, but if you got Raiders Chiefs every year on Christmas, it would be a lot of fun because, like we're saying, the NFL is going to play every single year, what you think, on Christmas from from here on out. So if they got that game as one of the two or three games that day, it would be pretty cool. And what I like about it is 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 you you can set up like like Thanksgiving. I mean, I grew up in Michigan, so we always knew Lions, Cowboys. We just knew it. It's just the way of the world. I would love to see them Raiders just say, okay, Christmas is owned by the Raiders. Just give it to the Raiders Chiefs every year and rotate it. What? Whereas Detroit and in, in, in Dallas are always at home. Right. Just rotate it. One year at Allegiant, one year at, or even if I if my a gun was put to my head, 
I would even say, fine, make it Arrowhead every year. I, I don't care. Just I want Raiders, Chiefs. I'd take 17 weeks of it, man. I'm telling you, I love it. I, I It is. I wish that you had the privilege of being a team beat writer because, Matt, these Raider Nation, man, they're special. And they they live for this game. They live for it. It is on their mind 20. It is like Michigan, Michigan State from the Michigan State perspective. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the 49ers owner came out, and he was awfully bold about Brock Purdy's contract. Your thoughts? Well, I think you've seen, and uh, you, there are also comments about Kyle Shanahan from Kyle Shanahan talking about how good Brock Purdy has been his first two years, and how you know how much they depend on him, and how reliable he's been. It, the NFL it goes from zero to a hundred very quickly. And you go from Brock Purdy being a great story as a rookie with Mr. Irrelevant and taking over after a couple of injuries to guys to now being a full-time starter. And now he's going to his third year. Now you really have to think about, are we making a commitment to him? And it's not just a commitment for this year. It's a commitment for down the road, because if this guy is your starting quarterback, your franchise guy, you're going to have to start paying him upwards of 40, 45, 50, whatever the salary is market value. And it seems to be going up almost every year. Um, the, you know, the way contracts are now, is he going to get as much as Joe Burrow or, you know, Patrick Mahomes when he redoes his deal or Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts? No, I don't think he'll get that much, but he's going to have to get as much as, you know, as Daniel Jones got and Derek Carr and Dak Prescott and, and, Kirk Cousins and all these guys have gotten in, in the $40 million range or more. So now you have to think about two things. Number one is this guy who we really have faith in and believe is going to be our franchise guy. And are we able to win with him and he's going to be able to lead us when he's one of the guys making a lot of money? Because it's a lot easier in the NFL to build a stellar roster when your quarterback is making rookie money. You know, you have no money really allocated to the most important position, so you can spread it around to to really build up your depth and find impact elsewhere. Once the quarterback comes off his rookie deal, the teams that continue to have success are the ones that have high-level guys there that are good year in and year out. Your Mahomeses, your Burrows, your Allens. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers when he was with the Packers and, and guys like that that are, are consistently at the top. So if they're content to pay Brock Purdy, then that shows they really believe in him. Because, again, Kyle Shanahan's track record is he's a guy that can work with a bunch of different kinds of quarterbacks and he can make it work with cheaper, under-the-radar options. So if they're going to start to pay Brock Purdy some premium money, then they really do believe in him. I agree. Now, I thought you guys did a good job covering the story. C.J. Stroud really opened up about winning in year one. I thought it was a great story by you guys. Would you talk about it, please? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think that every he came into the league with the Texans with a good reputation and, and you know, uh, was regarded as a top prospect, but I don't think anybody really – knew he'd have the kind of year he had. One of the best, if not the best, quarterback seasons from a rookie. They win the AFC South. Um, they win a playoff game. And now, you know, he really set himself up to potentially take the next step. You know, there people are starting to think of them as a team that's going to be a yearly factor now in the AFC with him because you have one of the top quarterbacks, one of the best young quarterbacks. And I think he he did a great job of touching on, you know, just, listen, we won a lot and he played well, but it's not always as easy as it looks. Like there's so many different things you have to uh, worry about, so much attention to detail at the next level. And I think he he kind of had the right approach to it without, you know, getting too far ahead of himself and, and really focusing on what he can control. And I think that kind of level, that level head we've seen from C.J. Stroud is going to serve him well 
as he continues to go uh, through his NFL career. Agree with you. Um, another story I thought you guys really <clears throat> covered well, and I want to bring to my audience, was the Jets owner, Woody, gets into it with Robert Sala. Uh, listen, I've said all along, <clears throat> the Jets don't go to the playoffs. He's done. Uh, that's my opinion. <clears throat> but they put all their eggs in the Aaron, uh, in, in Aaron's basket. Talk about this story. Well, here's the thing. It's it was vague. I believe that um, Colleen Wolf from NFL Media, NFL Network, was the first person to report it. Um, but we've had, you know, there was a, a Jets reporter, Connor Hughes, said that that didn't happen. And even Colleen Wolf's account was a little bit vague. She's she said it was a heated lively conversation but she didn't know what it was about it could have been about dinner plans it could have been about what you know we don't know um and i think it's interesting because the jets always seem to have these kind of stories whether they earn them or not and so i understand why jets fans might be a little bit annoyed about it um if it wasn't it's always the deal. jets being the jets isn't it right if it wasn't a big deal i understand why jets fans would be like well why is this even getting mentioned um, getting back to what you said about all the eggs in Aaron Rodgers' basket, there is an immense amount of pressure this year on the Jets. Uh, Robert Sala, Rodgers, Joe Douglas, the GM, to have a winning season and get to the playoffs. Um, you know, listen, Woody Johnson is the owner, so you can't fire the owner. So he's going to be there. But those guys might not be if they go 7-10 and 10 again, 8-9, and, and, and miss the postseason. So – uh, and I, I will say this. I think the Jets have had a pretty good offseason so far. I like the Tyron Smith signing. I like the Mike Williams signing. I like some of the other moves they made to shore up their offensive line depth and, and kind of solidify their roster. But it's all about Aaron. It's all about what level he plays at. Um, and that's how, how he goes is how far they're going to go and ultimately what direction the franchise takes after the 2024 season. I agree with you. All right, I want to get into Joe Milton because this is a guy that is getting a little buzz. People are talking about Joe. First of all, tell everybody who Joe is in case they don't know, but talk about his pro day. Well, Joe Milton is a, is a guy who started his career at Michigan, was a pretty high-level recruit, played some there, started some games, lost his job, transferred to Tennessee, at Tennessee, he's behind Hendon Hooker for a year, and then he kind of blew up. He has, I mean, big-time physical talent. I mean, he could stand – it's like Napoleon Dynamite. He could throw a ball over the mountains. He can – he really can, can stand there and sling it 75, 80 yards or, or whatever. And you saw in the video that we wrote about his, his pro day, he had a couple of throws that were like, wow, you, you could see it. Now, he is raw. He's a little older because he was in college for five years. He's a developmental-type quarterback. He's not a guy that you're taking um, – I don't think you take him even day two. Uh, I think he's a day three, round four, five guy probably, and he's good to – if you're a team that's pretty solid roster-wise, you don't have a lot of holes, and you have a quarterback that you trust, He's the type of guy that you could take and mold and maybe have something down the road, uh, whether it's as an intriguing backup or somebody that could become trade bait if he shows something, or maybe you find, you know, a diamond in the rough starter. Um, so listen, he's, there's no guarantees there. He, like I said, he's a rough, raw prospect, um, but he has a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and he's played at, in the two best conferences in the country. So, you know, he's gone up against good talent. Now, you know, this, I have predicted there's going to be more offensive linemen selected this year than at any time in NFL draft history. Now ESPN's predicting there'll be more Michigan Wolverines selected. And, and excuse me, I said in the first round, excuse me, but they're saying more Michigan Wolverines in totality in the draft than any school ever. I think they're predicting 16. You can correct me. What do you think of that prediction? And, and, and I can't argue with it. 
they are predicting 16. Uh, Matt Miller was the guy uh, who came out and, and put out a seven round mock draft this year, this week. And he has 16 Michigan guys going from uh, JJ McCarthy, top 10 picks all the way through the seventh round. And that would break the record. I think the record's 15. Georgia broke it uh, maybe 2022. Uh, Georgia has it. They, they said it then. So if they break it, it's an impressive record. But listen, we know Michigan did have a lot of talent this year. Their roster was excellent. Mm -hmm. They they really didn't have a weak area. And I think that when you see that kind of roster depth and you see uh, they're coming off a championship season, you're going to get a lot of guys picked. And, excuse me, you're going to see later in the draft – I think to me, I think you if you're picking sixth, seventh round and you need a guy, someone, I think you err either on the side of a guy with big time upside, like raw, untapped talent, or you err on the side of somebody who played in a lot of big games or played a lot of games for a legit program. And Michigan's guys, a lot of them are in the latter category. They played in important games for the last three years for a top tier program, just won a national championship. So, I mean, I, I don't know for certain if they'll get 16, they could get 15, they could maybe find even more than 16, but there's going to be a lot of Michigan Wolverines called over those three days next month. Totally agree with you. I got to tell you, it's going to be a fascinating draft, Matt. I am so looking forward to this draft. I am so looking forward to just watching how this whole thing plays out. It's going to be, and, and the Raiders have just put themselves in a great spot where nobody really knows what they're going to do. And it's not because they're going to do something stupid. It's because they've been so disciplined. I think it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it, my friend? It will be. I think starting from first couple of picks on where you get that entry with quarterbacks and, and what happens after all the way through, I think you're going to see, uh, a pretty entertaining draft. All right. He is the great Matt Halatic from the spun.com. I'm Hondo Carpenter. Remember, follow me on IG at Hondo SR on X, formerly known as Twitter at Hondo Carpenter. You can additionally check me out uh, at si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. Matt, tell everybody your X handle. You can find me on X, Twitter, whatever you're calling it, uh, at Matt Halatic 919, M A T T H L A D I K 919. Um, I've already had a bunch of Raider fans over the last few weeks join me on there, and I'm always welcoming more. Um, so, just, yeah, just come check it out. Thanks, everybody.